Hey friends, hope the morning's treating you well. Hope you got your coffee if you drink coffee. I've had way too much coffee already today. I figured I'd come out here to the park and talk to you guys. And uh, it's just beautiful overcast day. I love overcast days. But I had a strange thing happen last week. Last Saturday's video about Keith Richards, um, it turned out that ended up in Google search results. So when you Google Keith Richards, this is kind of crazy to me. When you Google Keith Richards, the second result was that video. And um, I might try to throw that video, throw a screenshot of that up here. It stayed that way for about 48 hours. So you, you, know, you click on it, you see Keith Richards for your Google result up top and a picture of Keith. And then right down there uh, in the bottom left is my video is the damnedest thing i've had that happen quite a few times before but that was the most surprising one for me it happened the week before with peter frampton like i said it happens every now and then where it ends up somewhere in the search results i think the only other time i can remember it being that big a deal and lasting is when i visited john bonham's grave and uh hopefully you guys have seen that video if you haven't you ought to but, uh, somewhere out in England but I that kind of threw me you know you you have to sit back and think about stuff like that every now and then where you're just posting videos and you never think about that they might get a bunch of reach and that Google would actually think that I'm some kind of a source that should be trusted or whatever you would think they would throw Rolling Stone articles you know things like that I don't know who else, if the Washington Post wants to make a video about Keith Richards, but um, this is the day and age we live, where some jackass, you know, from Wanamaker, Indiana, can tell a story about Keith Richards and end up in the second search result in, uh, on Google. It's pretty strange. But I'll take it. It was a fun thing, and we laughed about it around the house quite a bit, and... Uh, I don't know. Anyway, a lot of people seem to like that video. I got a couple comments. Um, so just, the title was Keith Richards electrocuted on stage. And people were saying electrocution means death. And um, before I posted it, I wasn't really sure about that. So I looked at Webster's Dictionary online, looked for the definition. And um, I wish I could remember the exact wording, but it said causing severe illness or death or severe, uh, you know, per person doesn't have to die to be electrocuted, according to Webster's. So whatever, man, people, it's the Internet. People are going to voice their opinion, just like I voiced my opinion about Keith Richards and, and Google seemed to want to want to let people know about it. But uh Lots of good stuff on the channel this week. People loving the Kenny Vaughn stuff. I love having Kenny on. I love hanging and talking to Kenny. And um, I'm glad you guys enjoy that too. He's just, besides being an amazing player, he's just a really fun, it's a really fun hang. And I think people don't talk about that. Like if you're a musician and you're hoping to get a gig with a, a larger artist or traveling thing, if, um, if everybody is like, quote, good enough, aren't you gonna pick the person who you like being around the most? You know, if there's like five people that you're choosing from and they're all wonderful players, you know, one of them might be hands, you know, just like way better than everybody else, but they're kind of an asshole. You're not gonna pick that person. You know, we're going to go ahead and pick the one that's fun to be in the van with and that's going to be fun to be on stage with and all that. And I think uh, I shouldn't say this about Kenny, but I mean, he's that way. He's really, really pleasant and nice to be around. And he just happens to be really, really great. You know, one hell of a musician and player. But anyway, I'm glad you guys like those Kenny videos. And uh, I also posted my buddy uh, Brenda Colliday did a video of her talking about the... Uh, um, about the Ryman and the efforts to save the Ryman and not a lot of people talk about that I hear it in some circles in Nashville but I've never really heard much talk about it outside of there about how close it was to being torn down and 
just how much there just wasn't really a, a lot of people in power who cared about saving it. There were a few people that did, and they were, you know, they worked their ass off to to save it. And my favorite part of that story is that the uh, the architecture critic in the New York Times, it's Ada Louise Huxtable, I think was her name. This is a Imagine the person who you know writes about architecture in the New York Times, and this is a person you know who walks in certain social circles, circles, and uh, I don't know. You just see them with a martini in their hand or whatever. But this person understood the historic significance of uh, the Ryman, you know, of how the cultural significance of country music how it represented, it was a true expression of this large group of people, working class people. And she completely understood that. And she understood that the Ryman was an important piece of architecture that needed to be saved. And uh, she fought, she wrote that article, and uh, she understood it way more than a whole lot of people in Nashville that should have known better. A lot of people that were, we're making a lot of money off of that. Hey, we're working class, good old boys. But I like that. I really enjoyed that. And it's written amazingly well. I went ahead and put a copy of that article. I think I pinned it in the top comment. If you haven't watched the video, watch that. It's a really good one. And it got me thinking, um, have you guys been to the Ryman? Have you seen a show at the Ryman? Have you ever been there? I was trying to think of like uh, the shows that I've seen at the Ryman. And I waited quite a while. I had gone on a tour there with my buddy Dean Metcalf. This is before I moved to Nashville. This was a long time ago. But the Bob and Tom show were on nationwide, just syndicated. And Dean's the producer of that. And we have videos here on the channel of Dean talking about some of his guitars. He's got a great guitar collection. But he, Dean and I went down and uh, Someone at the Ryman was a fan of the Bob and Tom show and they got us this great VIP tour in a place and we walked around the Ryman by ourselves. And we even went up in the rafters, like a, above the ceiling, there's a really, really large area that was once open, I think. So you see the old ceiling, how it's way taller than what exists now. And we went up there and walked on the ceiling and looked around. It was amazing. It was really great. So I'd been to the Ryman a couple few times, but hadn't been to a show. And the first show, I hope I got this right. I'm 99% sure this is the very first show I ever saw at the Ryman was Gillian Welch and David Rawlings. And um, it was, I think it was like 25 bucks and it was freaking great. I mean, they are absolutely great and phenomenal. And um, it was just beautiful. Amy and I went, just had a great, great time. I thought that they said during the show that that was the first time that they had ever like headlined at the Ryman. And this is within the last 12 or 15 years. I don't remember when it was, but I just could not believe that because there's so many younger artists that uh, would sell out like three or four nights in a row that I didn't think were, I know I don't like them as much as Gillian Welch and David Rawlings, but I just didn't think they were as popular, but uh, obviously I was wrong about that. But I don't have my finger on the pulse of that kind of thing. But it was a great, great show. And I think that the Ryman is a great place to see like an acoustic sort of thing. I've heard that it's a bit bombastic if you get like a loud band in there. And I'd seen some bands since then that I thought were a, bit, a little bit loud and it wasn't that great. I won't talk about who that was or whatever, but uh, I um, also, before we moved to Nashville, like right when we were talking about moving and thinking about it, Gillian and David played every Wednesday at the Station Inn for I think six months. It was $20. And the place holds, I think, 100 or 110 people. A little small place. If you've been to the Station Inn, it's just an amazing, beautiful place. And uh, so I would drive down on a lot of Wednesdays and lay down my $20 and see 
Gillian Welch and David Rawlings in this small room. And it was just, I mean, it was beautiful. It was great. And I thought, what an amazing town. You know, Nashville must be, you know, you can imagine what I thought of of Nashville at that time where I could see Gillian and David on a Wednesday night. And I could see the time jumpers on a Monday night at the Station Inn. And a lot of that had to do with me wanting to move to Nashville. And, um, but then I remember, I'm gonna talk about Gillian Welch here a little bit, ain't I? We might as well praise Gillian, what the hell? When I, uh, when I, the first tour I did with Billy Bragg, I opened up with him on some West Coast dates and um, you can hear the cops are coming for me. The, uh, the tour ended in San Francisco at Great American Music Hall, wonderful venue, and um, Billy sold out two shows there. So did two shows in one night. So my part of the tour ended there, but the next day, Billy played at the uh, um, Harley Strictly Bluegrass Festival. And um, he's like, why don't you hang out, Otis? Why don't you come along? And yeah, I'd love to, man. So I went along with them and uh, just kind of hung out that day. Billy played his own set and he played, um, man, he played uh, a songwriters around with Guy Clark and Steve Earle in front of a lot of people. It was a big, I don't know how many people. It was, I think it was on like the second biggest stage. There had to have been 5,000, maybe 10,000 people there. It's really hard to tell sometimes when the crowd's that big. And uh, it went great and it was beautiful. And I also remember, this is jumping into my head, I remember Todd Snyder played like that first time and uh, we're watching him, uh, Todd, I'm like standing there behind the stage or on the side of the stage watching Todd and um, Billy comes up and stands next to me. And he's just like, do you know this guy? And I'm like, well, yeah. And he's like, I mean, he was blown away. He had never heard of Todd Snyder. And he's just like, this guy's amazing. This guy is just really, really great. And uh, I'm like, yeah, Todd's especially, he had the crowd in the palm of his hand, people laughing, singing along, you know, as Todd does. And I'm like, no, man, he's pretty, he's got it going on. He's the real thing. And Billy was just enamored. I remember Billy walking up to him and I could see them in the distance of Billy giving him his, you know, you're doing something great here, you know. He's a, Billy is a beautiful, beautiful man, a very positive, encouraging human being. And uh, I, know, I have nothing but beautiful, wonderful things to say about Billy. But we were off at some point in, there's a tent and it was a little bit cold. It was a little bit like this because it was October and, um, it was a little bit cold, and I remember I walked away from this tent where people were eating. And I just kind of walked out, and there was a dog running around. And uh, of course, I'm standing there by myself in a field much like this, um, which I don't think anybody's around me, and I start petting the dog, because that's what I do. You know, you're probably that guy at the party too. You know, I just, I'm gonna go pet the dog. There's all these stars everywhere here, but I'm gonna go pet the dog. And uh, so I'm, petting this dog and I'm looking down and as I'm looking down I hear a woman's voice uh, saying um, oh I've been trying to uh, get close to this dog uh, for 20 minutes or whatever and I look and she's kind of wearing a dress and, and um, you see like her legs uh, below the knee or whatever and she's like I'm trying to warm my legs up against this dog and I'm kind of laughing and we're talking back and forth it's just nothing really it's just small talk or whatever and uh i said well i better get back in here uh, and i look up and it's gillian welch and i'm like oh man oh man and uh so that was pretty beautiful that was uh, my first official run in with gillian welch and um i should say the year or two before this we were talking about moving somewhere, and Austin was a place that we thought about, Amy and I. And um, Austin had already gotten really expensive. And uh, I'd, I'd love to live in Austin, especially way, way back when, but it wasn't really going to happen. The money, you know. And I was in a bar in Bastrop, Texas, 
and talking to the bartender and a guy sitting there and I just started like, hey, are there any ghost towns around here? You know, and um, some guy over on the corner bar said, well, there's a, there's a town for sale. I said, a town for sale? What the hell? Ta really? And he said, yeah. You know, and he says, look up such and such. I went back and Googled it and looked it up. It was McMahon, Texas. It was a whole town which consisted of five or six buildings. And uh, it was a bit of a fixer upper. It cost about two, I think it was, they were asking 200,000. And the next day I went out there and looked at it. It's for a whole town. There was a dance hall. There was like a, I don't know, just a few different buildings. Some of the buildings were just full of crap. Some of them were like, I'd consider living in that, you know? But, uh, I started thinking about it and I'm really bad about going down rabbit holes, as you guys know. And I started thinking, man, what if, we t Amy and I move here and we try to like turn this into some kind of a tourist trap or something and um, like a roadside attraction and uh, I was thinking what could we possibly do and I thought man I'm going to form a cult I'll be a cult leader and um, we'll make a giant statue and I was trying to go back and forth between do we make a giant statue of Harry Dean Stanton like the world's largest Harry Dean Stanton statue or do we make the world's largest statue of Gillian Welch and worship her as the one true savior? And I um, <laughs> thought about it and I like, let's do both. And uh, so I thought I'll just set up, a, since I have my own town, I could be the sheriff and the mayor. I could have a boss hog situation. I could set up a speed trap, live off the revenue. Could just be weirdos. I'm good at that. And. Uh, Maybe people would come and visit us, and maybe we could have some bands play on the weekend. I had all this planned out. So I call Amy, and this is when I'm expecting her to, you know, just completely shoot it all down and be the, the smarter person than me. And I tell her a whole deal about it, and she laughs when I say start a cult or whatever. And, um, and she says, let's do it. And I'm like, what? Let's do it. And... Uh, well, I, I start backpedaling. I don't know. I, well, um, maybe. And uh, we talked about it off and on for a bit. I mean, for a while, because it, it took forever for the town to sell. I think he could have bought it for 100000 And uh, we'd talk about it. And I had this vision of me spending the next five or ten years of my life with a hammer in my hand, just being Mr. Fix, fixer Upper Guy. Excuse me. And that didn't sound very good. I don't want to be Mr. Handyman and all that. Although with the age of, of YouTube, we could have really had a fun little thing. We ended up moving to Nashville instead, bought a house in East Nashville. And, um, and those years were freaking great. You know, absolutely great. There's, as I'm thinking about this with, uh, with Gillian Welch, I really hope that that doesn't sound weird. I've posted on, I posted on Facebook and like Instagram, you know, and people would laugh about it that we, yeah, we'll worship her as, her one, as the one true savior. But I just really think she's great. And I mean that out of respect. And I don't even know how you would build a statue of somebody, but it's funny to talk about. Anyway, moved to East Nashville, everything was great. And then um, Amy wanted to be closer to her parents that were aging and we decided we would come you know, move back to, to Andy. And uh, so while everything was in motion to move back, I remember I went over to my buddy Phil Kaufman's house one Tuesday afternoon and visited him, Road Mangler Deluxe, the guy that burned Graham Parsons' body. And uh, you guys know Mangler, as I've talked about him a few times. I'm sitting there just hanging out with him and I'm like, oh, I got to go play poker, man. We play poker every Tuesday. And um, so every Tuesday I play poker at Andy Reese's house. The Mangler, I'd have dinner with him for years and a bunch of friends like Chuck Mead and Brenda Colliday, a bunch of friends, Sergio Webb, um, every Sunday for a long time with Mangler. So anyway, I leave Mangler's house. I'm going over to Andy Reese's house where I play poker every Tuesday with a bunch of great session players and just fun people. And uh, we'd done that for a few years. 
And as I'm driving through East Nashville, I go by Woodland Studio and I look over and um, there's David and Gillian just standing outside of Woodland Studio. And um, and I kind of thought we would have become friends by now and probably been on a bowling team or something together. That's what Amy and I used to joke about, but it never really happened. And that's fine. But um, I just kind of looked over and, and saw them as we went by on my way to poker. And I just thought to myself, man, this is a pretty charmed life here. This is a pretty interesting, neat, um, special thing that I've been able to be part of in some tiny little way, or just observe from the outskirts of, and uh, do you really want to let that go? And I'm like, well, things are in motion, so that's all right. And I go back all the time anyway, but I remember I had that moment in the car and I was like, all right, man, I got, this is cool. We can move back to Indy. I'll go back and stay in the Fiddler's Inn and go back and, and visit my friends. And uh, anyway, if you don't listen to Gillian Welch, what are you doing with your life? What are you doing? David Rowling's machine. I don't know, man. Check it out. But anyway, uh, the last thing I want to mention is, um, okay, if you're watching this on Saturday, I post this on Saturday mornings. If you're watching it on the Saturday that I post it, and you're anywhere near Columbus, Ohio, come out to Natalie's tonight and um, see Peter Case. Peter Case is playing at a place called Natalie's. Um, you can look at petercase.com or Google Peter Case Tour, and you can find the information for where that's at. Me and my buddy Todd Fox are gonna drive over to that gig, and we'll be there. And um, if you're there, come on over and say hi, if you're anywhere around there. Peter Case is freaking great. Nobody's better than Peter Case. Peter is really, really great. I haven't seen him in four or five years. I saw him last time out in San Francisco. He lives in San Francisco, and I was out there and got to see him. And uh, he's really great, and uh, I'm looking forward to, to seeing him and catching up and all that stuff. But if you want to meet me, you know, and don't talk while Peter's playing, you know, we'll talk before or afterwards or whatever, but come out to the gig, man, because me and my buddy, buddy Todd will be there and we'd be happy to see you and, and meet you. And uh, if not, it's cool. I don't even know if anybody watching this lives anywhere near Columbus, Ohio. I have no idea, but um, Peter's going to do like Chicago. I think Valparaiso, Indiana, maybe somewhere else that was close enough for me to go to, but I think this is the only one that I can actually make it to. So I figure what the hell, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go check it out. And uh, I hope you guys will too. And um, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna leave, you know, I'm gonna post a video up here of, uh, last time I saw Peter, I filmed this when I was t dipping my toes in the video waters and I didn't know what I was doing and I tried a little experimental thing and I put it up here but uh, click on that and watch it and I'll see you guys down the road much love to you